All right, today I'm going to go through and show you how to make some nice moody lighting. So I've been working on this asset pack for the Unreal's Marketplace, uh, you know, just like a World War One trench pack. Um, so, and then I saw Unreal announce that lighting challenge. So I thought what I'd do today is just walk you through the process I got to getting this sort of result. Now, um, you know, it might not be that useful for you. Lighting is probably a very subjective thing and a very creative thing. But um, if this is the sort of look you're going for, um, or even if you're just interested in how I got this look, then uh, this video will be for you. So uh, what starts with is some reference. So uh, I have a reference board here with a few things. So we've got quite a few, uh, well not quite a few, just a couple of different movies here. But um, the ones I really like are these ones from Warhorse by, uh, that's Steven Spielberg, that sort of blue tinge, um, as well as like ones like this, which is the longest engagement, which is a French movie. So that's my going to be my reference for this. Um, obviously, reference is always important, whether it's really modeling or lighting or anything really. Uh, reference always helps. So we're starting with just a completely blank canvas here. Uh, so I'm going to go through and mainly what makes this effect is a lot of like settings and tricks and stuff like that. So we'll start with like a light, which is fine. Um, also going to grab a, where is it? Skylight like that, switch to movable and turn on real time capture. Going to grab, I'm just going to grab the actors. There we go. Uh, also need some clouds, volumetric clouds, there, volumetric cloud, and atmosphere, atmosphere, like so. Now it is sunny day, not quite the same look. Uh, I'm also going to try and be good and put all these in the lighting one to make it organized. Volumetric clouds as well even though that's not technically light. Alrighty, so uh, I'm going to fix up the clouds. So uh, if you want to know how to do that, then you can, I have two tutorials now on that, um, as well as a free uh, blueprint on Gumroad that does it for you, but I'm just going to, I've already set one up, so I'm gonna pop that in here. And this is pretty nice looking clouds now. So first is, uh, I want it later in the evening because that always looks good. So control L is how you can move the sun around with the mouse like that, if you just hold it down. So I'm gonna lower the sun a bit to get it a bit sort of lower and maybe a bit more orange like that. So already looking a little better. Uh, I'm going to change a few settings inside the directional light. So I'm going to use temperature and just leave it at 6500 for now. Uh, I'm going to drop down the advance and I'm going to look for, is it in here? Ah, cast shadows on atmosphere uh, on clouds. I don't think it's going to do anything. So I'm going to, yeah, no, that doesn't affect anything. And what I want is cast cloud shadows, this one. So I, I sort of like that dark look, even though it's day now. Uh, obviously one way of doing that is just dropping the brightness of the sun, but then we still get this harsh light. So what I'm gonna do is click cast cloud shadows, which means these clouds in the sky are going to cast shadows and that's gonna make things, in this case, really dark. Let's, um... oh, the skylight had real-time capture off, that's why. So there we go. Now I can drop the sun down and already like, here's a nice look. Um we want the Arabian desert, I guess. Uh, the other thing we can do is enable light shafts, although we're not probably not gonna see much of it. So light shaft. Light shaft occlusion, there we go. And so that should give us a bit more, and the bloom probably. I'm gonna leave the bloom off actually. So now that should give us and I want like that, there we go. All right, so now we have a dark scene, but the light is still bright. So we have sort of softer shadows, these little peaks of light coming through, which looks really nice. Uh, so now what I wanna do next is the, uh, you know, the, what do you call it? The um, fog. So we're going to use the exponential height fog for that. So I'm going to grab, is it in volume, visual effects? 
Exponential Hype Fog. I'm going to put that in. And uh, this doesn't look the greatest to start with, but uh, first of all, make sure in your project settings, I believe it's on by default now, uh, all the way down lower, 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 lower. There, there we go. Uh, support sky atmosphere affecting Hype Fog. We want to make sure that's enabled. <laughs> All right, so next in the exponential height fog, we've got what we wanted to go down and do is make sure that volumetric fog is enabled and that the fog in scattering color is set to black. Then I'm going to up the fog density to 0 0.1, which is a lot. Now this doesn't quite look like how we want. It doesn't look like fog. It just looks like white wool at the end of the thing. Um, so we are going to go back down to the fog, volumetric fog settings, and I'm going to grab the extinctions extinction scale pretty sure that's extinction and i'm just gonna turn that all the way up to 10 um and then that gives out that like foggy look i might maybe not 10 that's whoa yeah what well, i'll leave this at let's try 0 0.05 or 0 0.08 maybe And that's giving us a nice look now already as well. So now to get it the rest of the way, uh, I'm going to use the post-process volume. So I'm going to add one of those, which was also not in that. Uh, so I'm going to go down and enable infinite extent so that it just stretches forever. I'm going to go and change the exposure mode to manual and probably bump this to like 12 and a half maybe 13, 14, just because the recording is darker for some reason, yeah, 13 and a half. So now we're getting a bit more moodier look as well. Now I'm also going to scroll down and go to the color grading and grab the temperature. I'm just going to drop that to make things a bit more blue, like so. All right, so I don't think there's enough fog actually. So I'm going to go back to our exponential height fog and I might find, oh, there we go. The fall off works. I'm just going to play around with some of these settings. Maybe if we up the density a bit, or up the extinction, down the density again. I'm getting a nice result now. I dropped the fall off all the way to zero. I wanted to. Like that. So it really is just uh, going back and forward a little bit. Um, maybe we drop the sun down a little darker. Oh, there we go. That looks a bit better. It's really just playing around with the various settings. Uh, exposure compensation. I'm going to up that back to 14 because it's darker on the stream. Uh, maybe 4,000. There we go. So what we can, we can really push that sort of blue, blue and orange, that teal and orange. Uh, I know it's a very overdone color palette, but um, it works. looks nice. Um, we can go into like this lantern where it is and grab the temperature here and like set that to like 2500 and that'll get us like that nice look so darker and contrast here looks better so i'm not quite seeing that but uh the stream is recording it like that so i'm gonna do it to the um to obs's preview rather than my own uh i'm also gonna go through and have a look at maybe we give it a bit of chromatic aberration uh, I know I probably want to turn up the vignette slightly. That maybe we add a some lens flare or something. This lens, this light produces it. Oh yeah, if I get close enough. There we go. Now we're getting something nice and moody and dark and cold looking, which is sort of exactly what I want to go for. I want to go for a sort of like rainy, wet damp, cold, somewhere where you don't want to be. Alrighty. 
I think that's just about it for what I want to do with this. So we're using, I'm using ray tracing, but still using Lumen for the uh, the quality and stuff like that. I could up the settings, I guess. Um, however, I wanted to sort of do this more so with, um, oh, film, film grain. We could add some film grain. Right. I don't know if film grain really works on YouTube. Oh, that is way too much film grain. And then, you know, you throw in like a, a, a cinematic camera, which has its exposure set incredibly low for some reason. Uh, it'll be for the... What do we say? 13? Yeah, you throw in a cine camera, get a bit of depth of field in there, you're going to create something really nice. Ooh, there we go. Cool. So I thought I'd share just uh, the process. I, I didn't quite get the exact same result as uh, the, uh, what we had at the start of the video, but it, it's like turning on that cloud cast shadow and changing extinction scale in the exponential height fog is what I really think does does it for the most part. Um, you know, so if you're you're working on your own lighting, then um, give those two a try and see what you come up with, because you'll probably be able to get something really nice just using those settings. You know, look at that's nice gradient and stuff. So just keep an eye out for those settings, might help you in the future.